The three massive PhD application mistakes that I see people make is that they don't address three major things. First of all, they don't make it clear why you? Why is it that you should be doing this PhD? What skills, what experience do you bring? We'll be going through that. The th Second thing is, why them? Why the institution or the supervisor that you wanna work with? Is there an awesome combination of skills? Is there an instrument or a, uh, an uh, application or something in this institution that makes it a perfect fit for what you wanna do? And the third thing is, why now? Why is it that you need to be doing your PhD now? Is there something in the field that's recently changed? Have you noticed a gap? Has your supervisor recently made a discovery that you want to help sort of uh, explore? All of those things need to be made crystal clear in your PhD application. And sometimes it is just um, like a, a few uh, simple formatting changes or bumping up a paragraph to the top of a section that can make a huge difference. And we'll be going through all of the tips and how you make those three things awesomely clear in this video. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter where you can sign up and you'll get five days of awesome emails full of value from daily planners all the way through to how to write the perfect abstract and my favorite tools for PhD students and academics. Go sign up. Okay, so the first thing that people don't make absolutely crystal clear in their application is why they should be doing the PhD that they're proposing. So, have you got any lab experience? Now, lab experience goes a really long way because in undergraduate, you know, you do normal labs, labs that everyone else has done in the past, but if you've got a little bit of summer lab experience or if you've done something in your masters or if you've done any sort of research experience that should go into the application because remember these supervisors right let's be perfectly clear and honest about what they want. They want productive PhD students who are gonna produce peer-reviewed papers to further their career. And the more experience you have in the lab, the more likely you're gonna create good science that's gonna end up in peer-reviewed papers quicker because you have that kind of foundation knowledge about how to work in a lab or how to do research if you're doing humanities. Um, and you know, that is really what they want. So lab experience goes a really long way. And if you haven't already volunteered in a lab, um, consider doing it. Now, I'm not a big fan of volunteering in general, but if it can help you just stand out a little bit, a little bit of volunteering will do a great thing. So letters of recommendation also go a really long way into helping them say, yes, this is the person for me. All scientific fields are relatively insular. Like I remember once uh, walking through a conference and people were like, oh my God, it's that famous scientist. And I was like, who the hell are they? They were famous only to a handful of people. And that should tell you that if you get into the click, if, uh, a certain PhD uh, professor or a researcher says, yeah, I know this person and they're great. It goes a long way. Personal recommendations um, really work. So if you can get a letter of recommendation from wherever you have worked, even if it's say um, an undergraduate, even if you're coming in with no lab experience, speak to your lecturers and ask for a letter of recommendation if you've done particularly well in that course and ask them to describe how you would fit into that research group and why you're an awesome candidate. Um, and the last thing is any previous success should be made super obvious. And this isn't a time to be sort of uh, bashful about your previous accomplishments. So make it absolutely clear. Have you got high grades? Have you got something that you can boast about? Like write down immediately, right at the top, like your highlights. And uh, I think that is something that not a lot of people do because they feel a little bit like cringeworthy about talking about themselves in a really kind of uh, boastful way, but it is a very important skill to get over. In Australia, we have this tall poppy syndrome where if someone stands up and puts their head above the rest and go, I'm great, they love to cut them down. But an application is where you want to be, that tall poppy. 
The second mistake that people make is they do not make it absolutely crystal clear why the institution or the supervisor should be involved. Make it clear why them. Why is it that this university is perfect for helping you do this research? Why is it that that professor is going to be the person that to help you through your uh, candidature and help you really sort of understand your research area? Um, it may be a collection of scientific instruments that are at this uh, institution. It may be a combination of skills. Or what I like to do uh, is sort of like pick and choose and sort of create a Venn diagram, right? Of saying, well, we've got this, these skills, we've got these instruments or these capabilities, we've got this kind of uh, situation. It may be it's like, you know, I moved to Australia to do solar cell research. That was a win. Um, but, you know, if there is something else, an environmental factor of why it needs to be in that city, that country, wherever, put that in a nice Venn diagram and say, this is where my research sits. Use diagrams as well. They, they you know, a picture tells a thousand words and a Venn diagram tells even more, I'm sure. But, you know, why them? What is it? What is it about the overlap of these skills, these capabilities that make it a no-brainer to be admitted into that university to do a PhD? The third thing that should be really obvious and people don't do this enough is why now? You need to inject some urgency into this kind of application by looking at Google Scholar. Go to Google Scholar, type in your research field, and look for recent publications that support your PhD application. Say, look, these people have just published this. This is a hot topic. Another really interesting thing, and, and uh, something that I don't see enough of scientists do, or even PhD applications um, involve, is head over to Eureka Alert and Science Alert and look for popular science articles on your topic. What this will do is is help demonstrate to the people who are looking at your application that this is a hot topic. You know, this is making its way into media. This is making its way into news. So um, getting really hot topic things from your field and say, this is emerging because I've got this evidence, this evidence, this recent paper, and these students have just graduated. Look at other theses from the supervisor that you want to um, get involved with. And uh, that makes it sound a little bit weird, doesn't it? That you want to, to be part of their research group. Um, and, you know, just bring together a case for why now? Why is it that within the next six months you should start this? And by bringing in Google Scholar, by bringing in Eureka Alert, Science Alert, and also any other students that have recently graduated, once again, you're creating a nice body of evidence to say, not only it should be me, not only should it be them, but it should be as soon as humanly possible because it is happening, you know, the, the field is evolving quickly. And I think those uh, three things coming together are an absolute winner for any PhD application. So general mistakes that people make is the biggest first one is that they do not speak with the professor before applying or they don't build enough of a relationship because really the professors are gonna be the person, the final uh, gatekeeper to this application and you want them to be excited when the admissions office says, oh, we just had this application from so-and-so and you want them to go, yes, I want them, like it's a no-brainer. So um, build up a relationship with a PhD supervisor beforehand, and there's no harm in showing them your application, um, and in some places you have to show your PhD application to the person that you actually want to end up with, but it varies from place to place. But uh, yeah, making sure that they're excited so that the admissions office can be like, okay, yeah, this, this must be a good thing. That's the sort of uh, impact you want to have once those two talk. Okay, also, get it proofread. There's another thing that uh, is just annoying, which is, you know, your first uh, sort of appearances or your first thoughts about a PhD application should be, wow, this is professional, this is great. There should be no distracting elements. There should be no uh, grammatical errors. So, you know, you if you can't afford a proofreader or you've got no one to proofread it, just download Grammarly, download something that will just help you produce good sentences uh, and just good sentences and good paragraphs and good formatting goes a huge way in making people pick up your uh, application and go, oh, this one is uh, substantial, it feels professional. Like that's how you want the first impressions to be. Um, 
And also, don't be scared of formatting. Make sure that what you're saying is easy to interpret. Remember, these people have to look at a whole range of different applications every day, every week. So you want yours to stand out. So there is no harm in using background colors, you know, just to highlight like your achievements in a box. Put stuff right at the very top in a bullet point and say, these are the awesome features about me. I've got research experience. I've got these letters of recommendation. I've got this. Uh, this uh, grade mark, um, and all of these things will come together. And uh, that's the final bit. The, the final thing is that we do not put the best things up front. So the way that we tend to write, if we're just doing it normally and naturally, is that we hide the good stuff under just sort of like background information. That is incorrect. A supervisor of mine once said, bring all of the awesome stuff that for some reason we want to bury, bring it to the front. You want the first paragraph that they read under each section that they give you of the application for them to go, well, this is impactful. So start big and then talk about your other achievements. But if you're not sure which one is your biggest achievements, get someone who's familiar, like a PhD student, and ask them, which one impresses you most? Is it my research experience? Is it my letters of recommendation? Is it my grades? Is there something else? Is there something else about my application that makes me stand out? And then bring that, boom, right to the very top, because they're probably not going to read or remember much, but you want them to feel as soon as they read each section, they'll be like, oh, this is another rush. This is another thing that I should definitely take uh, notice of. And uh, doing that for each section will definitely help you build up that confidence in your application. Those are the biggest mistakes that PhD applicants make in their application. So let me know in the comments which ones you would add. And if you have enjoyed this video, remember to go check out academiainsider.com where I have got my new website, my new ebook, my new insider community. All of these things are helping PhD students and academics become the best versions of their academic selves. So go check it out because I've spent a lot of time uh, writing the ebook and stuff and I think you will like it. So uh, I'll see you over there and I shall see you in the next video.